All right, guys, welcome to part two of Stumps and Storms, or Storms and Stumps. I don't know. Anyway, it's part two of taking apart this big pin oak that fell down my neighbor Charlie Mann's property. And here we are, we're going to finish cutting it up today. Thank goodness he's got this nice bucket truck, and uh, that helps us get this done safely. But as you can see, you know, we've pretty successfully debranched this thing entirely, took all the big limbs and branches off. We did that in the morning in the heat of the day. Um, we smartened up a little bit. We came back at 5.30 in the afternoon, and now it's not quite as hot. Well, it's probably just as hot, but the sun's behind us, so we're kind of in the shade since we're kind of near the woods. It's kind of where the trees come from is from the woods. So all we got left to do is take this guy apart and then buck him into two pieces. And you can see on this thing, I've got it marked of the two logs I want to keep, uh, the, the bottom two part of it, pieces of it. It's still a little bit tricky because you can't just cut this thing without having it fall on your head. So what I'll do is we'll get up in a bucket truck and I'll make it a little bit shorter and then we'll drop it down and then we'll be good to go. So I hope you enjoy this, guys. Um, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, blah, 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 all that good stuff.
we got left here. This tree is being held up by this branch here, and you can't see it very well underneath here. Another piece of branch, so I will. It's an already split here, so there's a lot of downward force on this guy. I'm going to get rid of that guy, and then we'll cut this guy here and put a rotator chip. There you go. Making sure I got a clear path. All right. Well, the only thing holding this thing in the air right now is this branch here, or potentially the stump where it came up rooted. So we'll see how this works out. Um, it's a little bit sketchy. I'm going to cut this branch off here and hopefully. It will come down a little bit and not on me, it'll stay stable. I asked Charlie to move this um, log out of the way here because if this comes down and hits it, I don't want it to roll and hit me. So he's just going to push that out of the way and it will be good to go. So that's the story and I'm sticking with it. All right, let her rip, Tater Chip. Let's get this thing done. Okay, so now I got three more cuts to make. If I was really smart, I would have put on a 28 inch bar because this 25 inch bar doesn't go all the way through the log. But what I do here, since this thing's got a lot of tension on it, I'm gonna do a, a plunge cut and cut the bottom part of it first, then we'll cut the top part of it. It'll be easy as pie. So here's my first cut. Got two more to do after this and we will be done. So be a little bit careful if you've never done a plunge cut here because plunge cuts um, could be a little bit sketchy uh, if the bar catches wrong. If you don't do it right, it'll pop up and whack you in the face and you have to get stitches or a band-aid or something. So be careful on those. So don't hesitate to pop wedges in here either sometimes if you think it's going to jam up because these, these logs weigh 4,000 pounds each. If this thing you know, goes the wrong way, you're going to have problems. So, but it was very clear this part was in the air. It was going to fall right down just like it did. So no wedges needed.
All right. Well, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully, it didn't bore you and put you to sleep. I think you guys like watching videos of us cut up lumber from logs instead. But I wanted to show you a little bit more how much effort it is just to get logs to the sawmill. So this is one tree. We got two 17-foot logs out of it. And we'll make nice fence boards out of them. But it's a lot of work. We had two or three people. We spent probably four hours on it already just getting this thing ready. Maybe we're not real fast, not very efficient. Regardless, it takes a fair amount of work when you're doing this by hand. So if anybody's interested, if you look up the Doyle scale for logs, okay, a log here, which is 27 inch diameter and 17 foot long or 16 foot long, should have about 563 board feet of wood on it. That's quite a lot of board feet. And we've got two of them. So we'll call it 500 board feet of wood or something like that. So take that number, okay, how many board feet is there in a board? Well, the boards are gonna be 16 foot long, six inches wide, maybe an inch thick. So that's about eight board feet. So when you divide that number eight into 563, you will get 70. So theoretically, we'll get 70 boards per log or 140 boards. That's a lot of boards. We'll see how it works out. Thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and leave a comment.